Hello and welcome. My name is Tim de Kamper, I'm VP e-commerce EMEA at Debt. And next to me is sitting Max Kissing Jones, who is the head of partnerships EMEA at Commerce Tools. Max, welcome here. Tim, thank you. Uh, pleasure to be here. Great to have you. Now, Max, um, uh, we, let's have a conversation around our partnerships depth with Commerce Tools and, and Mac. Mac is, um, of course, a very interesting movement within the industry. Can you tell us a bit what Mac is, what benefits has to organization and the relationship Commerce Tools has with the Mac Alliance? Absolutely. Um, so, Mac is standing for microservices, API first, uh, cloud native, and headless. Um, Commerce Tools was one of the founding members of the Mac Alliance. Um, and Mac is really, it's a, a, an architecture that allows uh, customers and prospects and, and clients to be able to actually deliver um, business services that are core to their needs um, and build those uh, as and when they need them. Okay, and that's clearly one of the benefits, I think, of a Mac-based architecture and approach. Absolutely. I think so. what it allows is a customer to uh, look at the challenges that they have and focus on where they need to act first. As you start to move away from um, the monolithic platforms that are out there at the moment, there are some challenges that uh, moving to the Mac architecture, um, especially around education. Um, a lot of companies need to understand around the architecture first before they start looking at delivery. So how much um, um, would organizations who primarily are led by partners, for example, and have not a very strong technical foundation, would they be fit for, for a Mac-based approach, you think? Um, I think they would, um, but what I would say is that they need to have a very strong partnership uh, with you know, an organization who can help them develop their infrastructure, can help them deliver um, things out front, um, and to bring uh, their business to market as and when they needed to. Yeah. Now, as Dabs, we have developed uh, our accelerator, which, um, let's say, accelerates projects where Commerce Tools is in the mix, uh, have the CMS, a search engine, and basically streamlines the whole process from design up until development of, uh, of, of templates. How do you look at, at accelerators and how do you see that fit in, in let's say, the Mac and Composable world? I think accelerators is exactly where we need to be. Um, as we start uh, replacing monolithic platforms, a lot of organizations need and want to have something that will get them to market quickly. An accelerator allows them to do that because all of that pre-work has already been done. Um, again, it's composable. It allows the customer to uh, get to market as quickly as required. But they also need to have the partner behind them, someone who is educated, someone who understands their business, someone who not only understands the technology, but also how the business is use, utilizing that technology. And now what you see is with Mac-based approaches are primarily adopted by some larger organizations um, who have clearly gone into a best-of-breed technology. Could accelerators, for example, help also medium-sized organizations adopt a Mac-based architecture? Absolutely. Um, as we're seeing now is prior to you know, the beginning of this year, it was you know, a lot of large organizations that were using a composable and a Mac architecture. This year, we're seeing a lot of, of the mid-market companies that have, um, predominantly, they've got a, you know, they have a, a technical um, background. They also want to get to market quickly. So by utilizing accelerators, by utilizing you know, a go-to-market from an organization that already understands what the market requires, we've seen a huge uptake uh, in that mid-market. Okay, that's great to hear. And now I understand that um, Commerce Tools has invested um, some in building a checkout uh, product. Can you elaborate a bit more on the checkout proposition, this new checkout proposition of Commerce Tools and, and how that would fit potentially with medium-sized organizations or larger size organizations dependent on um, the aim of the checkout product? Absolutely. So what we see is that uh, checkout, or we call it checkout anywhere, um, is fundamental in growth for not only small, but also medium and large organizations. The ability to have your checkout on any uh, site, whether it be social, whether it be your website, whether it be on billboards, the ability to be able to link directly into the checkout uh, from a QR code will allow you to, uh, first of all, utilize the technology, second of all, convert um, you know, in a, a better, more timely fashion. Um, and what we're seeing is that it can be used in any medium. 
Um, as we've seen, social is, is prolific. Um, and as we start to move forward, a lot more business is going to be done through social. So the likes of TikTok, Instagram, Snapchat, uh, Facebook, it really doesn't matter which area. We can see that as that starts to progress, the way of being able to do that is to convert quickly. And that's what Checkout Anywhere can do. Now I want to uh, look a bit about B2C versus B2B. I see more and more organizations looking for B2B solutions where they would uh, want to use that solution not only for B2B but also B2C or vice versa. Now I know that Commerce Tools has invested quite some of its engineering power into uh, extending the B2B capabilities of Commerce Tools. Um, can you elaborate a bit on, on that? Absolutely. So. For us, uh, B2B, B2C, and also D2C uh, is extremely important. What we're seeing is a lot of uh, B2B organizations um, who have typically done, you know, uh, sold directly through to the, a, a distributor who then sells to you know, a, a shop who then sells to the end user. Um, so we're seeing a lot of those B2B organizations going D2C. So this is around how do you go direct to consumer? With that, you need to have a robust solution that allows you to have the fundamentals um, to do B2B correctly. Um, a lot of, of companies still you know, use the old-fashioned way. It could be with a piece of paper and someone going into the store and actually you know, writing down on an order. With uh, Commerce Tools, having our B2B functionality will allow you to streamline that. But also, it means that you can build a, a modular approach. So if it's one particular area you're looking at, you can focus on that. And the same thing is moving through to D2C. So as you start looking at going direct to consumer, you can utilize a lot of the functionalities that you already have in your D2B, uh, sorry, your B2C into your D2C uh, environment. Now, we've already spoken a little bit and talked about our accelerator that we've as that uh, built with, with Commerce Tools. Um, you are uh, taking these, uh, let's say, integration accelerators more seriously as Commerce Tools. You're opening a marketplace. You're evaluating uh, plugins with, with third-party vendors, etc. more and more. Can you tell us a little bit about the change that you're undergoing as an uh, organization within Commerce Tools to the approach uh, with, with, uh, with plugins and, uh, and accelerators? Absolutely. So. From our perspective, um, having those plugins is key. Um, but not just having those plugins with you know, the CMS vendors and the PIM vendors and the, the you know, uh, finance vendors, marketing vendors. It's also around having uh, our partners who build accelerators. So by building best of breed, uh, utilizing the technology in a composable way that allows a customer to get to market quickly. So we've invested in a marketplace to allow our uh, ISV vendors to submit and certify their connectors as well as accelerators. So we want to make sure that the accelerators that come into our marketplace and that are being delivered into our customers are certified. Um, that gives the customer peace of mind knowing that the accelerator that they're using has been certified, is good for purpose, and can help them get to market quickly. Yeah, yeah. So you're taking your integrations and plugins in that sense more seriously than before, which is which is good to see. Now, um, one question about um, about headless. Of course, Commerce Tools is an API-based engine. Any new features developed first of all uh, through API, made accessible through API. Can we expect also from a admin interface uh, point of view um, some new things in the, let's say the coming years ahead within Commerce Tools? Um, I think you will. I think there's a lot of development that's going on at the moment um, within Commerce Tools. We try and look at what the market is uh, requiring. Um, we invested in a front-end solution uh, a number of years ago, but being a, um, a, a what I would call a, um, a not a product-based company, but a portfolio-based company, it means that we have different parts of our business that will allow you to use best of breeds. Um, with regards to administration, uh, we do have a console that allows you to administer um, both connectors and also APIs. 
But I think you'll see a lot more development of that in the future. So a final question, uh, Max, uh, and that's around artificial intelligence. Now, I see a lot of vendors investing heavily in artificial intelligence. Um, a lot of prospects and customers come to us um, and asking how we see artificial intelligence changing the e-commerce environment. What is Commerce Tools' take on, on artificial intelligence and what does it, um, uh, what does Commerce Tools do to, let's say, look into the artificial intelligence world coming two or three years? So Commerce Stores actually have uh, got an internal work stream at the moment where we're looking at how we can utilize artificial intelligence and chat uh, GPT in our own workings. So we've been able to see that uh, internally it's being used. Um, we've also seen clients where they're using chat GPT to actually build code um, on Commerce Tools. Now, that's fantastic. However, I think you also need to make sure that you have the experts that can not only look at it, they can make sure that it was working properly and it's being utilized in the right way. I think um, AI will add value. I think it will add uh, less complexity and I think it will also be quicker to market. But I still think that we need to make sure that we have, uh, we're using it, utilizing it for the right business needs. Um, so, you know, if it is, you know, looking at how we can create code, are we doing it the right way, and is it delivering value? Thanks so much. Okay, um, thank you so much for uh, listening to us. Um, I found it very pleasant talking to you, uh, Max. Uh, thanks for the conversation. Any last words from your end? Uh, well, Tim, firstly, you know, thank you very much for having me. Um, I think that, you know, my view is I think that uh, depth with the development of Dash, the accelerator that you have. Um, I think will add an additional benefit for any of our customers um, and in any of our prospects that are trying to get to market quickly. So thank you. Great, great. Thanks so much. Thank you.